Hello and welcome to the February 2014 energy reading. I'm Adrienne Elise. Well, the main energies we're feeling here at the beginning of February is this Venus stationing direct. It's been retrograde in Capricorn since the winter solstice. And so now with its forward motion, a lot of times when planets either station retrograde or station direct, that's when you're going to feel the retrograde the most. So this beginning part of February is kind of a, a time of um, some vulnerability feelings coming forward as we start to see the effect of this Venus retrograde cycle in our life. Really asking us, being Capricorn, really asking us what we really love, what we really care about, how we love ourselves, and whether are the structures of our life align with that. And so very much in uh, accordance with the energies of this whole time period, the 2012 astrology flavored by that Pluto Uranus square, which is getting very triggered this month by an exact of uh, Jupiter coming into a T-square with those planets. And so just a review there, we've got Uranus, the destroyer, the lightning bolt change, sudden change in the sign of the self, making a 90 degree angle with Pluto and Capricorn. And so Pluto is about dissolution, about breaking down, and then that is in the sign of, of structures. And when these planets were together in the 60s, they created a whole bunch of social change. And now they're in a square. So we're starting to really feel this square as in April we'll have the next exact, which will be the fifth one of seven. And so we're looking at the heart chakra, I mean, excuse me, the throat chakra activation. We're coming up above the surface here. We're starting to express what our new world means, what's no longer working for us. And so this is bringing forward quite a bit of change in our lives personally and then on a global political scale as well. So with Venus going direct at the end of the of the month of January, and then we also have the new moon, had the new moon on the 30th of January, and on the 31st was also the moving into Chinese New Year, the year of the horse. And so then with Venus going ret uh, direct, all of this kind of forward motion, new, 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 a lot of energy. The year of the horse is really about being in alignment and moving forward and so we're seeing this energy as a huge leap into the age of Aquarius and um, this is being really shown to us in our lives we're kind of having new rules a new world a new paradigm but in order to bring in the new we've got to make sure we've gotten rid of the old and this spring is really about that because we have this Venus retrograde and then right after Venus goes direct uh, Mercury goes retrograde on February 6th and then right after that goes direct at the end of February, Mars goes retrograde until May. And so all of these personal planets kind of like, what does it mean to us to move into this new world, this new age of Aquarius? And we really are learning to play by some different rules. All this new, new newness is bringing some real new energies to the planet. DNA, light code activations, ascension energies. And um, so this can be, we're having just a lot of, of huge influx of energies in this month of February. Um, and this has been going on since the beginning of the year. And so these energies are something that we need to get used to. And so this Mercury retrograde is going to be, um, that starts on the 6th of February and goes until the end of the month, is going to be a great opportunity for us to kind of uh, slow down and uh, assimilate to some of these changes in our lives and in our physical body as this light is coming in. Now that's really highlighted because Mercury is going retrograde in Pisces but then going back into Aquarius. And the shift of ages that happen, they go backwards because it's like the background of our sky is moving. That's the shift of ages and that's the opposite direction than we see the planets move through the signs. And so it goes backwards, it goes from we were in the age of Pisces and now we're moving into the age of Aquari Aquarius. And so it's very interesting with this leap, this lunging off into the age of Aquarius, having a Mercury retrograde cycle that goes from Pisces into Aquarius. And so the rethinking that we're doing with this Mercury retrograde, the reanalyzing, the, re the adjustments we're making in our life has to have to do with this new world, with reconciling these new energies in our life. So February is going to be about that 
huge month for activation. And it's a very different energy than Mercury retrograde usually has, where you feel kind of slowed up, things aren't moving um, well, it's like hard to make decisions, not a good time to, to really move forward on much. There is going to be forward motion here because of all this new energy. But it's also about learning to make micro adjustments. So if you're shifting so fast, you can't necessarily keep following the same path. You've got to shift the path, and that really fits the energy of the horse because the horse is just kind of barreling down uh, the pathway. If there's an obstruction there, um, if it could easily get over it, it will, but if it's in the way, it's going to find another path. It just wants to keep going. And so this is kind of the neat energy of the year of the horse. So these retrogrades aren't necessarily playing out the way they would um, in other situations. And so this Mercury retrograde is just a really good opportunity to step back and make micro adjustments along your way because you're shifting so much that you've got to let your world uh, shift to that, uh, adjust to that as well. So um, this Pluto, we talked about the Pluto square Uranus and the age of Aquarius and this Jupiter coming in and really creating a T-square. Now Jupiter was last summer in August and September was in a T-square with Pluto and Uranus and um, that's in Cancer and so we were really feeling the energy there but that was when Jupiter was going direct now it went retrograde in November and now it's going back into the T-square but in a, in, a, in a backwards motion and so that has this real kind of wait a minute wait a minute did I get this lesson did I get this understanding and we have Jupiter and Cancer is about this wider view, this coming home to ourselves as cosmic beings. Uh, what does it mean to be home in the cosmos and the Earth coming into its awareness um, of its place in the, in, the, in the omniverse? And that is a lot of these new energies and the lining up of things in our life. Um, and so what's not working, what's not lining up, that's part of the energy of this year, the horse. It's not like the year of the snake where we had to sit there and try to figure out and wonder and worry about whether things were good or not or if we're on the right path. The year of the horse is very different. It's like, okay, is it lining up with my soul purpose, what I really care about, or is it not? Is it resonant or is it not? And um, so there's just not a lot of gray area and it's going to be a lot easier to leave behind what no longer serves you. And so just keep that in mind as you go through these adjustments over these next few months as we get these new energies and have these retrograde planets to um, kind of assist us in reevaluating our life. And um, so the Jupiter went back into the T-square with these planets at the end of December. And so we'll be there for a few months, but the exact of that Jupiter T-square is on the 25th of February. So we're really feeling that this month, a real trigger of these squaring planets and really starting to bring to the surface what these changes mean. We've had some major fundamental changes behind the scenes in our personal life, in our psyche, um, behind the closed doors of government bodies. Um, people have been being replaced and new energies are coming in. And so we're gonna start seeing this as uh, this year goes on of these outward expressions of what it means to be in the age of Aquarius and what it means to let fall away what no longer serves us because we have this Uranus lightning fast change in the sign of the self and we have Pluto the sign of dissolution and destruction um, square to that in the sign in the sign of our structures and so it's just the breaking down of what no longer serves us. And is that our physical body, the way we do things in our physical body? Is it our relationships? Is it our work life, our career? Is it on a global financial scale? So all this is starting to shake down and change. And um, this energy is a little disconcerting. And so there is a lot of fear right now. But when I really examined the fear that's going on for people, really asking in my life these people what 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 are they really scared of that I'm seeing this fear energy and it always comes down to oh gosh you know I can't decide whether I should stay in this job or not or whether I should try to make a move or is this relationship serving me and so the the fear is around change 
And so it's really kind of interesting because there's a little bit of energy towards with all this tumultuous change energy going on under the surface like those tectonic plates. There's kind of a fear of earth changes and dr dramatic effects on the planet. Um, but some interesting concept that's come forward for me in the last couple of years is that the earth changes that we're looking for that we have been told about, we're taking those are taking place in our body, in the earth part of us. So we're making these changes so that it's more harmonious on the planet. And Cartron um, that comes through Patrick McCormick also had very, um, spoke to this and said that we are absorbing these energies so that Mother Earth doesn't have to. And so that fear of change, it's kind of like the new paradigm, the new world, the new rules. And one of the things that is very different is that cha the, the staying the same, being in conformity, used to make you feel safe, or that was how, what the programming says, that's how we say, if stay safe, we're going to stay where we are, we're not going to make any changes, we're going to batten down the hatch, and everything will be fine, we'll just weather the storm. Well, <laughs> this, t this storm, it's kind of like, you want to just kind of get out there and let the wind just blow all your clothes off because that's kind of what's going on here. It is no longer safe not to change. And so how we keep the planet safe and keep the peace and keep the good energy is that we change. We let our lives move. We come into what we're here to do on the planet, letting everything else fall away. And so that's this energy of you're the horse and this forward motion, this alignment, cosmic alignment, where it's very clear what lines up with um, your true path and what doesn't. And then it comes to your true path. Okay, so is it a responsibility, a duty, or is it your passion? And this Venus retrograde in Capricorn really brought a lot of these things forward for people. Like, what do I really want my life to look like? Like, am I satisfied doing this all day, spending my time, or do I have this higher purpose, something that I really want to be spending my time doing this. I want to be excited about my life. I don't want to waste my life. And so these planetary retrogrades in the beginning part of 2014 are really about just so much for support for these changes. And so the stress, the fear, the tension, the anxiety comes from resisting those changes. So if there's anything in your life that you have been holding off on, holding on to, now is the time to let it go. And you've got support for that. So um, it's a pretty exciting time, really. But I had a client ask, tell me about this anxiety feeling. Like she felt like something was about to happen. She said something big is about to happen. And it seemed like maybe, you know, her body and her energy, the anxiety was like maybe like there was going to be some kind of natural, uh, some kind of earthquake or something like that. And as we were talking, the message that came through to tell her was, this big thing, this sh other shoe you're waiting to drop, this disconcerting feeling that we're having on the planet, this kind of unsteadiness in all these changes as the tectonic plates of our life move around, the big thing you're waiting to happen is actually you. So it's time for us to move into the truth of who we are, move into, get activated and move into the expression of our true self. And so that big thing you're waiting for is you and your light returning to the planet. And you can come into your light and you can save the world too as you absorb these frequencies in your body. So just let it happen. Let the wind blow everything away that's no longer serving you. And just throughout it all, staying in the peace. The horse we talked about has got this desire to just run forward and just make a move and um, this impatience, but it also can rest in the field and be connected with the oneness by the creek and the peaceful energy of um, just being at one in uh, connected with, with the connectedness with nature, that meditative state. That's really important for this year. That's the antidote for all of this anxiety and um, for the fear of change and <clears throat> and for this impatience <clears throat> of getting forward, moving forward with our life. And so the full moon is on the 14th on Valentine's Day. So um, it's a very special full moon in Leo. 
and um, so that's Leo is about expression and so this Venus retrograde being this reanalyzing what we really care about and our love and how we love and how we love ourselves or not and so this um, it's kind of brought up some vulnerable feelings but moving into the to the full moon at the middle of the month is going to be some really sweet energy a desire to express love really good for love of awakening new love in old relationships or in new relationships. So that should be really fun and moving out of some of that vulnerability. Uh, but still we're feeling this very powerful T-square and this urgency towards change in our lives. Um, and now Mercury went in, in December, went into Libra. And this is a big shift, a big change. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Mars went into Libra. And Mars is our action planet, our fighter planet, and moving into Libra has kind of some interesting energies because, first of all, it's bringing some peace and harmony and justice energy to our fight, reevaluating whether it's useful to fight the old or should we just kind of let that go and start something new. Um, now, if it is a relationship or an energy thing going on that is wearing down, is getting old, has having lots of tensions, then this Mars and Libra is going to bring up argumentative energies in relationships. But it's kind of a sign that, um, you know, if it's not bringing harmony to your relationship, a new way to fight forward motion, um, then it's going to be bringing up this discord that maybe hasn't been looked at and needs to be addressed. So um, definitely uh, the place of our personal relationships is going to be where we're working out a lot of this stuff about how to move forward in our new world. Now people change and they're shifting so dramatically. So within relationships that might mean that one person is moving very fast and the other is going a different direction or whatever. And so that's part of the micro adjustments we need to make is to be willing to make these changes, to let go of the institutions in our life that aren't ready to be fluid, that aren't ready to support us in our full radiance. And so just this, this spring is the time, it's gonna be just so clear and so supported to make these changes. Um, so on the 18th, the sun moves into Pisces, and that is going to be a shift. This activation period is going to be kind of mellowing out a little bit. Um, this sun in Aquarius is really kind of shooting us with all this kind of Aquarian energy of the new world, um, new awareness, new light codes and everything. And so that's going to kind of ease off a little bit. Um, but the spring being intense with that Venus retrograde and then the Mercury retrograde and then the Mars retrograde and that's not going to resolve until Mars goes direct in May and so in May we're going to be able to <gasps> come up for air <laughs> and um, also Jupiter moves out of the square in May so this T-square kind of goes on this whole spring really intensely pushing us to see ourselves in a new way pushing us to make the changes to become cosmic beings and to have a new awareness of our world. Um, so in May we're going to have kind of kind of coming up from it, uh, for, from, for air feeling there. And this spring, just so much energy to support these dramatic changes. Imagine yourself, just take a minute right now, in February, March, April, May, three months, what's your life look like? How, how much can you dramatically shift your life in three months? The energy is there for it. And so it's just kind of looking at like, huh, I could have a whole different thing going on in three months. You never know. We'll just see, you know. So it's like letting these changes happen, letting the micro adjustments happen, and just kind of moving through with it. And um, as Jupiter moves out of the square in that T-square in May, and then in July it moves into a whole new sign, into Leo. And so that is going to be, of course, the expression of our new world is, start, is going to start to come out more in a very joyful way. And so July and August are going to be really beautiful like that. And this full moon in Leo is kind of saying, is kind of giving us a glimpse this month, kind of giving us a little glimpse of what we might want to do with these new energies. We're not a victim to these new energies. They're coming to help us. They're coming to save us, to change us, so that we can be enlightened and so that we can make the changes we need to make in our world.
So best of luck to you with all of that, and I appreciate you um, listening to the report and showing up and, and letting your light come in. And I have some classes to help with this right now. You can check out I have going on uh, leadership and abundance training, and then March 1st I'll be starting Landing Your Soul Purpose, and these are 10-week teleseminar series. And they're available by session or with the whole 10 weeks. And they're recorded for you to listen to if you can't make it to the live class. So I would love to have you take part in that if that resonates. I'm also available for private readings. These are aura readings looking at past lives and energies that can be shifted and uh, moved in your space that can help you harmonize your process. So you can check out all that at intuitiveempowerment.com and I will put links below and I wish you the best on your journey. Namaste.